Welcome back to Revoxa Life with Dr. E.B. on Bold Brave TV. Today, we are engaging in a very interesting and enlightening discussion with none other than Dr. Janet Thompson, who actually trained in family medicine. So she's a medical doctor, but she now practices uh, in holistic medicine at the Natural Health Center in Toronto. And I just uh, think that this is so interesting, bioidenticals and uh, naturopathics. And I actually want uh, you to just explain that to us during the break you mentioned to me something that was extremely profound. You said that in this practice, you take your patients on a journey. So describe to me how this practice works and exactly what you do. How is it different from your practice in family medicine, advantages, disadvantages, everything about what you do now so that our audience can be enlightened. Take it away, Dr. Janet Thompson. <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah, so so in this practice, basically I, um, so I provide hormone restoration therapy mm -hmm. using uh, bioidentical hormones. Mm -hmm. um, so our, the hormones that our bodies produce naturally, such as estrogen, mm -hmm. um, progesterone, DHEA, testosterone, Mm -hmm. um, thyroid. Um, so I've been trained in using these, pre um, prescribing these, these compounds, which have been prepared from, um, so they're bioidentical mm -hmm. and they've been, pre they're pre 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 being prepared from plant-based compounds. Mm -hmm. So whilst they're not naturally occurring, mm -hmm. they are, they are made from naturally found substances, usually wild yam and soy. And this has been this um, this has been going on for a long time. From the fifties, they've been making, or even before, they've been making uh, bioidentical hormones from these plant-based compounds. Um, and so it was found that supplementing like new, these deficiencies or hormonal deficiencies can lead to improve the functioning, quality of life, mm -hmm. um, you know, so things like energy, with various various indicators of of quality of life and. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically that's what I do. Most of my patients are, um, menopausal when pre perimenopausal, um, post -menop postmenopausal women as well. Some premenopausal younger mm -hmm. patients as well, maybe mm -hmm. dealing with PCOS, um, mm -hmm. which policy syndrome, um, yeah. you know, so I see a wide range of people. I see men as well who might be seeking testosterone replacement. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, but, the, but the common theme through all of these is just that it improves people's functioning and their general health mm -hmm. and their quality of life. So those are, those are basically the key indicators, um, mm -hmm. for a successful practice, for a success of my practice. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, yeah, and it, it's, it's been very rewarding because I, you meant, I mentioned about the journey, um, in doing this, it, it involves not just writing a prescription, for the hormones and then giving the hormones yes that is a big part of it mm -hmm. but it involves understanding the patient looking at their medical history so they have to come in that we have a first visit which is um uh, which is an hour long mm -hmm. and during that visit i took a, i took a, i take a very detailed history mm -hmm. medical social otherwise and i get to know the patient understand what factors may be influencing their general health etc um, and then, and then co coupled with blood work, which has, had been done prior, then I make decisions mm -hmm. about, um, what their hormone needs might be. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on and off of that, mm -hmm. uh, but as, of course, along the way, um, especially with women being in this stage of life where, um, the, the menopause or the perimenopause, you know, the, the women in this stage of life or people in this stage of life tend to be very depleted um because they've a lot of them are in the sandwich generation they're caring for their children they're caring for um pa aging parents wow. um they're they've been working in jobs for me that for many years they're tired they're, they're, a lot yeah. of people they're not sleeping they're wow. you know burnt out mm -hmm. so a lot of people that come to me are kind of are just are very run down very worn down and 
Wow. Um, and this is why they're seeking help. And so, um, mm. so this kind of provides a bit of hope for them because, you know, to yeah. say, oh, well, yes, you know, we can, there's, you know, we can improve your life. It can yeah. get better. You don't have to um, suffer, struggle so much, mm. you know. So that's mm. the premise, you know, to just help people feel that, you know, there, there, there is a, like, life gets better. Like it can be better, you know. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Interesting because you meant you mentioned hormone restoration, but interestingly, it's restoration of it's hope. Restoration. It's restoration. Again, restoration period. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's, yes, That's exactly. Amazing. So like a holistic uh, restoration. It, so yeah. you are restoring yeah. the hormones technically, but it's also a restoration of hope, you know, of who they are, like of you yes. know you know, they can get back to themselves. I mean, yes, obviously they won't be the same because life is about change and you're going to have, mm -hmm. you're, gonna, you're not going to be the same as you were when you were 25. And I always mm -hmm. tell people that, that, that to not to expect to go back to being 25, uh -huh. but it's about being able to live your best life yes. where you are, where you yes. are. Yes, that resonates with me because you know that, you know, I introduced the big C reattitudes for cancer patients. Here's yes. a lamp. Yeah. Yes. And that the age yes. of that. Yes. 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 Wow. Restoration of hope. That's hope. the age. I yes. is the reclamation of identity, yes. right? Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. And then the reaffirmation of self-worth, that's the S, right? And then we go all yeah. the way down to even the P, which is reignition mm -hmm. of purpose. Because once you have hope and once you see a future, then mm -hmm. you reignite your purpose. There is a reason why I'm still here and I want to live. So that's yeah. so important. Oh, wow. That's, so, you know, Sophia, you know, you and I are in different ends of the spectrum in terms of practice, because you see people when they're facing death, when they're very ill. Yeah. Um, and I see people when they're, they're not facing death immediately or, or they're, but, you know, it, it's still, it's still about providing that, that hope, that sort of, you know, helping them to, to, to still live, helping them to learn to live because they're still living, you know, and so even though we're on different sides of the the um the spectrum you know in terms of um mm. healthcare provision but you know yeah. it's yeah. that's so that's so right you're uh i i think that's a very valid point and it's really interesting you said that because you know, when we think of, okay, I'm treating patients uh, because I treat cancer patients, so they're facing death, mm -hmm. uh, physical death, right? And mm -hmm. of course, all the other mental, psychological toxicities that yes. are, are mm -hmm. then coupled with that. But mm -hmm. the patients you treat, uh, Janet, mm -hmm. they're also, interestingly, you can mm -hmm. be alive, but mm -hmm. they're but inside there is dead. no, yes, it's mm -hmm. true. I mean, mm -hmm. for want of a better cliche, walking dead, you can literally not be mm -hmm. present in your yes. own life. So Absolutely. you are indeed saving lives too. I mean, it's, I mean, we use different techniques, but mm -hmm. we, but what we bring to the table is mm -hmm. actually the same in terms of the restoration of someone's yeah. life and their purpose, et cetera. And I just think that, I think that we've somehow in medicine veered away from that so much because as you stated with, you know, the, the busy practice, et cetera, and you literally have to want to be that doctor and say, I will be no one else, but what I was called to be, as you said, it's a calling. And yes. once you, and, and it's not, easy it's e it's mm -hmm. not easy to do that because what you're doing is you're giving of yourself you've made that decision that i will not have this patient leave my clinic room without feeling as if yeah. i've given them more than just a pill right absolutely and and in fact that has been my modus operandi even when i was a family doctor it caused a lot of frustration because 
my modus operandi was that I needed to um, feel that at the end of every vi- en- encounter that I would have made a difference in the, yeah. in the patient's life, no matter how small. Yeah. Because otherwise I would have wasted my time and I would have wasted their time. Yeah. So operating from that premise, um, it's like you have to, you, 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 you see where you, you have to, um, you know, you have to achieve, achieve something at each visit. You have to make a difference. You have to, yeah. you know, to be that per that one to, 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 to take them where they need to, to go. Yes. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes. And it's interesting. You mentioned that take them where they need to go and you have to be the one um, to allow them to first sometimes even identify, right? Yes. Because, because they think that they're presenting to you for mm-hmm. you know hormone replacement they they think they're presenting mm-hmm. to you for that and that's what they are presenting to you for but there are mm-hmm. so many underlying yes. issues mm-hmm. that you unearth because you're interested right in treating mm-hmm. the whole patient right uh, yes. and and once you do that right remember mm-hmm. there because when a patient presents to you they're basically saying even without verbalizing I Mm -hmm. am trusting you with my life. I'm trusting Mm -hmm. you with my life. But they're trusting you with that particular part of their life, not knowing that in the end, there is so much more that you're imparting that that creates this whole person in a way, as you clearly stated earlier, that you're really restoring the yes. patient's life, the quality of life, et cetera. It's a, a complete restoration. And I and, mm-hmm. and I, I completely admire you for that. And and I think your mm-hmm. patients absolutely appreciate that. And I know when when you have a patient who walks in and they completely change when they walk out the door, you know their family members see that, right? So you're changing mm-hmm. the family too. You're changing the yes. actual dynamics of the family. You're, you're and how they relate to your family. And yes, it's a ripple effect. It's definitely it, a ripple effect. Yes, yeah. It's so amazing. It's yeah. so amazing. Okay. Well, no, so I mean, I must say, well, you know, you're, 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 that's basically mirroring what you do. You, you know, you have the, you have the, I'm, I'm really honored to be on your show today because, you know, you obviously have presented yourself to the patient in, in such a way that, you know, that you're their servant at that point and you are, you know, you are providing for them or providing the help and the guiding hand that they need at that point in time. Yeah, the difficult stage in their life. Thank you for saying that. And as you said, it's a purpose and a calling. And when you're made, when you're born on this earth, he's literally deposited everything you need within you to do exactly that, right? Whatever your purpose is on this earth. And you are doing the same exact thing. And I am so happy that you're working, walking in your purpose, because like you said, it's a ripple effect. You help all those patients. They have their they have a different perspective about life their family members the trajectory of a whole family and their children can change just by you changing that one patient's life you know so it it is absolutely of paramount importance that we do not lose sight of exactly why we are practicing medicine as you said presenting yourself to the patient where you said servant the same as a vessel. You're a vessel being used by him, created the way you were created to do exactly that. And yes. I am inspired. I am inspired. <laughs> so, so am I, I mean. <laughs> I'm inspired, I'm inspired. So am I. You, have, you have certainly inspired me and you've certainly, um, you know, given me cause to think and to reflect and, you know, um, this has been amazing, you know. Ah. Well, same here. Again, sentiments are reciprocated. And I am so happy that you agreed and you found the time because I know you're busy with family and your practice. And so thank you so much for being a guest on our show. And I know for sure that our audience will be re-watching and they'll be edified. But most of all, thank you for being thank you. the person that you are and the physician that you are. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you so much, Sophia. Thank you as well.